Hi everyone. So I finally finished the redesign of my stencil box deck vac thing. I don't even know what it's called. I don't have a name for it. <laughs> Maybe one of you can think up a really good name. I've redesigned it in Fusion 360 as a fully parametric design. So originally when I created it, I did all hard-coded measurements. It was all set up specifically for my stencil printer setup. But that means that when other people want to use it and try to print it and redesign it for themselves, they have to take either an STL file or a step file and remodel it and hack it and it's just not a pleasant way to use something like this when every use case is going to be different. So I read the whole thing inside Fusion 360, all parameter driven. I even did some uh, live streams about it on my second channel, it's called Unexpected Streams. Subscribe if you haven't already, I'll put the link down below or maybe up there. And basically you can adjust everything about it. You can adjust the, the width, the length, the height, the thickness of the walls, the printer tolerances, the number of supports inside, uh, all sorts of stuff. And once you've got it set up the way you want it, you just export the 3D files and print them. It's pretty cool. So I'm going to take you through Fusion 360 right now, through the design, point out some of the key parameters to give you an idea of how it all works. And I'm also going to give you a look at the results I had from my production run the other day. Seriously, the most freaking amazing results I've ever had in the three years I've been using solder paste and stencils. Honestly, it is just incredible, incredible. I think you'll agree when you see the results. So I hope you find this useful, and uh, if you've got a cool name for it, please hit me up in the comments and let me know. Uh, it needs a better name than vacuum, bed, box, something or other. Yeah, okay, let's go. So here is the final design. I've color coded things to make it kind of easy to see. You've got your base, which is in black. You've got a vacuum adapter. I'll talk about that near the end. We've got in green, that's just the cover that sits on the top. That only gets printed once. So the base, the top, and whatever you come up with with the vacuum adapter gets printed once, gets screwed together. As you can see, there's little pegs sticking up here. And then what you do is make a custom PCB holder for all of your PCB types. Now, if you, I mean, I've, I've I obviously use panels for all my stuff, so all of my shapes are pretty much going to be some form of rectangle or square. But if you have a kind of weird shaped PCB, you could always import that shape and cut that out. Uh, but this is designed to be run off a square. And all of this is driven from a whole bunch of parameters that I've created. So all of the starred ones, the yellow starred ones, are the Parameters, or under the favorites, are the parameters that you can all change. There are more parameters hidden below. Unfortunately, Fusion shows the start, the favorites in here as well, but all the ones that don't have a yellow star, um, they are formulas and stuff that are derived from other things. I mentioned don't change this next to them. You can try, but uh, the chances are things will break if you do. So the idea is it, you just modify the top favorites. And you've got a pretty big range of different things that you can do uh, from the basics of your base width and base height. I mean, they've all got comments next to them. I hope that they're fairly self-explanatory, but I can say, well, maybe my base, maybe it's going to be 190 by 190. And you can see the whole thing just rebuilt itself. Right? It kept the size of my PCB in the center and it completely rebuilt the whole outside. If I go and just get rid of the cover and the PCB holder, it's respaced out all of the supports. Now supports are there to hold the cover in place so when you put pressure along the, with the squeegee on the stencil, it doesn't bow down. So you can even, if you do make a bigger unit, you can you know put as many supports as you want. I can make it eight by, I don't know, 11. That's way too many, but you know, <laughs> it does it all for you, all parametrically. Um, might put it to four by four. You can adjust the overall height. So my base on mine is 20 millimeters. I do a, a 20 millimeter base, four millimeter cover, which is 24 mils, and then three millimeters for the PCB adapter because my biggest or thickest PCB is 1.6 millimeters, but I go all the way down to 0.8 millimeters thickness. And so by having that 27 millimeters in total and eating into the top PCB holder, my stencil is now fixed at a height that I never have to change. So in the past, I always had to adjust the height of my stencil on my stencil printer to move between 0.8, 1 millimeter, 1.6 millimeter, 
and it was that movement all the time that gave me wonky results because you can't just move it up and down. It's two little screws that adjust the whole thing and it was impossible to, to not put warping on it. Now it's set once, I never ever have to change the height of my stencil printer ever again. And you know I can go all the way up to a 2.4 or 2.6 millimeter PCB thickness if I want to within that three millimeters and it'll still work fine. So mine sets 20, but if you want to make it 45, bang, it rebuilds itself. And as you can see, the cover is back on top. Um, there's settings here for PCB width and length and thickness. So again, I could say maybe it's a 1.6 millimeter PCB and you can see it's sunk it down and maybe it's a um, 125 by, I don't know, 165 millimeter PCB, like a panel, and it recreates it all. It's all done for you. you. You really don't have to change anything outside of these parameters. You know, the, the size of the screw, I'm using a, a two point, M2.5 for these screw holes here, but you know, if you wanted to use an M4, you could just do a four millimeter screw and it adjusts the screw size, all right? And that goes all the way through to the bottom. Um, this section here is for a nut. Um, I use, a, as I said, M2.5 with a 5.5 width and height T-nut, not T-nut, square nut, sorry. Um, you can adjust that here just by changing that value and it'll resize for the different size nuts. You can even adjust the tab sizes. You see here the little things, I use these to hold it down. If you wanted to do something that was a different um, different length, maybe it's uh, 12 meters wide, millimeters wide, right? And maybe it's um, 10 millimeters high. I don't know, you can just change the values here and it adjusts that one on that side and the one on the other side. So I can't really think of anything else that you would want to adjust that isn't in here that lets you change things. Uh, you can even play with the fillets. Okay, I've got a five millimeter fillet on all the corners. Um, I, mean, I guess you could make it 10 millimeters, but you might eat into the holes. Um, but now it's a 10 millimeter fillet. Uh, put it back to five. I've probably got things in here that you don't even need to adjust. Wall thickness, uh, I've got mine set to 2.4. You know, it probably could have gone down to 1.6 and still would have been strong enough. That's gonna thin out the walls now. So now these are only 1.6 wide. And one of the key things is the printer tolerance. So every 3D printer is different and every nozzle size is different. You know, the, the common is 0.4 millimeter nozzle on a 3D printer, but you know, people print with a, a 0.6 or a 0.8 millimeter to do faster prints. So what this printer tolerance does, if I just show you here, if you look at the this peg and the hole that sits around it, the PCB holders are designed to just take off and put back on. Right, you put them on, the suction holds them down. But depending on your printer tolerance, that hole might be too big or too small, it might make it too loose. And the same with your screw sizes. I use an M2.5, but if I print a hole that's 2.5 millimeters wide, it actually fills the hole in a little bit, which means the hole becomes too small for an M2.5. So this printer tolerance here, you just play with that. So if you've got a really tight, tight tolerance printer, like it's really good quality, then you set that to a smaller value, and you can see here those holes adjust themselves. If you're using a much larger nozzle and let's say you need a, a 0.6 tolerance, you just change that tolerance there and it'll go through and change all of the things that are cut outs to compensate for it. So you shouldn't have to do any other tweaking other than that for your 3D printer, but you might need to do a test print to know what value that needs to be for you because every print is different. Okay, now the last thing I just wanna mention is this vacuum adapter on the side. I'm just gonna put this back to uh, 40. Oh, no, actually, what am I talking about? That should be 20. So every vacuum cleaner is different, every hose thickness is different, and every application is different. Uh, you'll see in a moment that for my setup, I have my hose coming out to the side and on an angle, because I want my hose to come around the back of the stencil printer and I've only got a certain amount of height between my stencil and the base of the printer, so I can't get the hose all the way in. But for some people who have got a different type of stencil printer, they can. Uh, some people want it just from the side. Uh, if you're using it just on the desk yourself with non-frame stencils, uh, you don't necessarily want the, uh, the hose hanging on the side, then you could do a, a top-down hose where the hose just plugs in vertically. 
I haven't made all the different combinations because everyone's requirements going to be different. So I've just got this little template here of what an adapter might look like and it's up to everyone to adjust that portion themselves. Uh, it's impossible for me to come up with a solution that works for everyone. But that's the only customization you'll need to do on this. Everything else is just parameter driven and as uh, so long as you don't make something that's bigger than what you can print, go for it. If it is bigger than what you can print and you want to cut it in half, you don't do that here. You export them as STLs or step files, bring them back into Fusion and cut them up then. Or maybe your slicing software can cut them up. But you can't cut it up in the parametric design because it'll all break. All right? um, okay, let's have a look at what my setup is now, now that I've got everything fully going with my new vacuum cleaner. And then I'm going to show you the results that I got from my last production run. So this is my final setup. As you can see, I've got little clamps that hold down the tabs. My um, actual base is, I could have got a little bit bigger, but I've got some issues with printing it to the very edges of my 3D printer. I've got a, a Feather S2 panel in here right now on this particular adapter. And as you can see, the adapter just comes out and I can take a different one and just put it on. And down it goes. It, I don't really care too much about the exact tolerance of my PCB. It doesn't have to hold it perfectly because once the stencil is down, I can then adjust from the, the sides and the front, get all the alignment right. You can see that my vacuum tube's going off the side. I've got um, only a certain amount of clearance once the stencil's in place, and I've only just got enough to get it here. Um, it's almost touching at this point here. So I've got a square exit that goes through into here. The amount of vacuum suck on this is incredible, and uh, the results are just fantastic. So basically, I just print a different cover with, you know, that's Feather S2, I've got one over here, uh, Tiny Pico V2, these are for my I2S Audio Shields. I've got just a whole pile of them over on the side, and I grab the correct one based on what board I'm making. Stick the stencil in, it's always at the perfect height. I never have to adjust anything here anymore. It's always perfect every time, and any amount that it's slightly out, the vacuum sucks the stencil down and makes it perfectly flat. So let's have a look at the results I just got on my last Feather S2 production run. Just have a look at this paste and have a look at the entire panel. So you can see the accuracy right now, the registration, the quality of all the paste. Look at the edges, look at the corners of all of the squares and the cutouts. You can see there's no paste that's been stuck in the corner of the stencil of, a, of an aperture. Look at the registration and consistency across the whole panel. It is just insane. This is sitting on just some tissue so I can move it around without having to touch the actual the panel and PCB as I'm likely to stick my finger in it somewhere. Look at it. It's honestly incredible. This is the reliability and the consistency I'm getting out of my stencil printer now and my pasting with my vacuum bed and just a $49 vacuum cleaner. Honestly, I would challenge a $30,000 stencil printing machine to do any better than this. Sure, it's a manual process. It's not automated. But part of the issue with the manual process is the fear of not knowing if it's going to turn out right where with an automatic process, you have the set it once, get it right, and then hopefully you get the repeatability. But with this, I've got 100% repeatability. It's incredible. Couldn't have dreamed of anything better. So that's it. Honestly, the most amazing results. Way better than I actually expected, especially in terms of consistency. I expected to get some pretty good results, but maybe not every single time. But I've run 60 or 70 panels of different boards through that now. so probably close to a thousand or over a thousand PCBs and I've had perfect pasting on every single one. I just, my mind is blown. Now, a couple of things just to uh, think about. When you print the cover, give it a bit of a sand after you printed. When a 3D printer prints these little holes, it does a bit of a build up. I'll generally get just some really fine grit sandpaper, sand the top of the cover down just the once, and every time I print one of these out, I give it a light sand on the inside and the outside to make sure that there are no little bits of plastic sticking up when the stencil goes down. Now, I mentioned before that the I, I get a perfectly flat stencil every single time, don't have to adjust the height, but sometimes you'll have situations where 
panels or PCBs come to you and they're warped. So quite often I'll have a situation where I'll put a panel in and one corner of it is sticking up two millimeters because they got twisted inside the packaging when they got shipped to me. It's okay. You put the stencil down and you'll kind of see it pushing up a bit on the stencil, but you turn the vacuum cleaner on and the PCB gets sucked down flat because of these holes. And then the stencil gets sucked down on top. And I used to have problems all the time with warped panels, especially because of V-score, putting them into the little peg points, trying to hold them up, put support underneath them, put the stencil down. And there was always one corner that wouldn't sit flat. With this thing, it sucks every warp down. No matter how badly warped they are, they just all get sucked down because of the vacuum. Honestly, it's amazing. So I've put the file in GitHub and I'm gonna put a copy of this video with the file, but you've probably already seen this video if I'm telling you, if you're watching now, this in GitHub, just so people have a bit of uh, information about how to use it all. You do need Fusion 360 to use this. Fusion 360 is free for the free tier. <laughs> and um, so it shouldn't be a barrier for anyone to be able to use this. I think there are some people out there that are trying to recreate this in FreeCAD. If they do, that'll be great. If I hear about them, I'll put links to them as well. And so those of you that want to use FreeCAD, maybe there'll be a solution for you as well. I used Fusion 360 because I know it. Not very well, but I know it. And I don't know FreeCAD at all. But you know, if anyone out there recreates this in a different program and wants to share it, let me know, I'll put links to it in the GitHub. Okay. That's it. Uh, if you've got any feedback on it, please let me know. If there's anything I can improve or add, please let me know. If you make adapters for different vacuum cleaners and you think it'd be cool for people to have access to them, uh, let me know and I can include them in the GitHub repository or just do a, a fork and a PR and I'll add them in. And if you do have a name for this, please give me a name other than VacBed, whatever. Yeah, it's just, it's terrible. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to uh, like, and subscribe, hit the alarm bell to be notified if I've got new videos coming out. Don't forget to check out my second channel. I just do live streaming on it and I do unexpected streams. Different times throughout the day, different days of the week. I just do, this is what I'm working on at the moment type streams as opposed to a fixed Wednesday morning stream where I cover a particular topic. So uh, check it out, the uh, link down below and I'll catch you all next time. Bye.